So we're going to go ahead and get started to wrap up Civicon. Um, hope everybody has had fun here in Denver. <laughs> hope everybody knew which cookies to eat and not to eat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know me, my name is Josh Gowans. Uh, I'm the lead fundraiser for Civi CRM. Uh, so in case you're wondering, the doors are now locked and I will shake everybody down for money. Okay. Uh, but seriously, um, I went to put this uh, closing presentation together and, and really didn't know exactly what the message should be. And, and I didn't feel so bad, actually, because most everybody that I saw that was speaking was actually doing their presentations last minute. So I didn't, I didn't feel so bad. <clears throat> but I did ask, uh, at one point I asked Dave and Michael about what, what the message should be. What do we want people to, to walk away with from, from Civicon? You know, what's been done in the past? And they both looked at me and said, well, it's never been done in the past. This is the first one. <laughs> so I figure I have, a, <laughs> I have a little bit of license here. <clears throat> and uh, so this, this is the ultimate not to be missed all things to all attendees, attendees wrap up. Um, before I get into the presentation, I think another round of uh, applause is in, in store for the volunteers. <laughs> also our sponsors. And now it's my time to thank you. Thank everybody for coming to, to uh, CiviCon this year. Um, our keynote speaker talked about participation in open source projects. And the fact is, is that without you, events like CiviCon, uh, projects like CiviCRM wouldn't happen. They wouldn't be in existence. So um, thank you all for coming today. Um, when I think about um, open source and uh, community participation, it reminds me of a story. Uh, it reminds me of a phone call, actually, uh, that I got a, from a good friend named George King uh, back in early August of last year. That was right around the time that I started with Civi CRM. And uh, George and I are good friends. We did a lot of cycling on the East Coast um, and uh, have just maintained that friendship ever since. He called me up and uh, just checking in to see how everything was going, and I told him about this great open source project. I told him how awesome it was, how much impact it had worldwide, and and he listened and uh, let me finish. And then when, when I was done, just very quietly and succinctly asked one question with, of course, a open source, huh? What's the business model for that? And that's, you know, that's a pretty simple question. It's, it's a, not an easy question to answer, but it's pretty harmless. It's a fair question, except it was coming from George King. He has this uncanny ability to deliver a question like this um, with the implication that he already knows the answer. Okay, he's one of those guys, which is very irritating. <laughs> he also has this ability to make it, by asking that question, uh, very difficult for the person to answer it effectively. So I, I sort of tried to stumble through it. You know, everybody's been there, you know what I'm saying. So I, I tried to stumble through it and, of course, failed miserably, got frustrated, and ended the phone call as fast as I could, and like, oh, I'll get him back. So the next day, I had my George Costanza moment, where it's like, aha, I know what I should have said. So now would be a good time to let you know that George is a banker. It's in his DNA. I think he's been a banker all his life, okay? So I called him back, and I said, George... I don't know exactly what the business model for open source is, but I know what it isn't. And so I gave him a long list of things that open source isn't that I thought fit perfectly well with his industry. <laughs> <coughs> and he laughed, you know, he listened, he, he laughed. He didn't deny anything, he laughed. <laughs> he neither denied nor admitted. <coughs> but, you know, as funny as it is, there was some truth to it, you know. Um, open source projects, Civi CRM, we're not too big to fail, okay? But I do believe we're too important to fail. And that's where the participation comes in. Everybody's seen this slide 
uh, on the big screen out there. It's been in presentations. We've talked about our statistics. And really, everybody owns these statistics. Everybody in this room that participates in CIVI CRM owns these statistics. These statistics are the result of everybody's hard work and participation. And that's, that's a really significant thing. And to me, that's the heart of open source. And I think that's what you know, Stormy was really getting at in her keynote presentation, that we, we all own this project. We all own its success. So participation, um, I've worked with a number of nonprofits as an executive director. And so I've done a fair amount of board development, and, uh, which is always a challenge. Um, but one of the things that I, that one of the things that I do is try to simplify it as much as possible when approaching new board members or developing board members. And I have a rule. It's called the three T's. Board members have to bring time, talent, and treasure. These three elements are critical to every open source project as well. This is what it means to participate. People can give time, they can give expertise, and they can certainly contribute financially. And the more of that that comes into the project, the more successful the project. Since I'm a fundraiser, I'm going to talk about treasure. That's one of two things that we don't talk about much in the United States, but that's okay. I'm not going to back away from it. So when we talk about, when we talk about open source, uh, we use the term free a lot. In fact, in a little bit, we'll say free is in beer. Thank you. I think it's more like free is in kittens. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you can, you can get a, a kitten for free, and uh, God bless you if you do. Um, <clears throat> what it means is, is that in order for that cat to grow up and barf up hairballs on your carpet, you got to nurture it. You have to care for it. Even though it's free, in order for it to truly blossom, you've got to take an active role in its upbringing. Pretty simple stuff. So I think free as in kittens is a little more applicable to open source software. So what does nurturing look like? I'm trying to keep this simple because I know it's the end of the, the conference. <laughs> what does nurturing look like? Here's a really easy metric. If every end user organization donated $60 a year to CiviCRM, the entire project would be completely funded for that year. That's not a lot of money, okay? That's how affordable this project is. And that's not the result, that's, that is the result of everybody's participation to make it that way, okay? So sometimes we look at numbers and we kind of glaze over. We've had some of those cookies. So I thought I'd, I'd sort of make an analogy out of it so that it might resonate more with people. $60 is the equivalent of one pint of beer purchased at a pub a month. One pint of beer a month. If every organization donated the equivalent of one pint of beer a month, the entire project would be funded. That is a terrible fundraising strategy <laughs> for two reasons. One, asking people to forgo beer. I saw a lot of worried looks. <laughs> asking people to forgo beer to donate to software probably would result in zero dollars. And number two, uh, and Joe Murray pointed this out very succinctly when I ran this analogy by him, asking for 100% participation is just unrealistic. It's not going to work. It's impossible unless we license software, which we don't, because we're open source, okay? But I thought it was kind of a fitting analogy. So when you look into that beer tonight, you're going to think Civi CRM. <laughs> so I had promised a couple of people that I was going to talk for two hours, uh, but I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. So I'm going to leave everybody with a challenge. We are um, very close to 10,000 active sites based on our metrics. At some point within the next few weeks, we're going to get there. And to celebrate, we're going to try to tackle three goals, three aggressive goals. In one month's time, around that time that we hit 10,000 organizations, we're going to secure 10 new partners, 100 new member organizations, and 1,000 new site registrations and Twitter followers. And when I say we, I mean everybody that's willing to participate, not just me, not just the core team. Anybody in this room, everybody in this room is going to receive an email from me asking for help. And anybody that wants to participate, I know you're going to go home with a long list of things to do at your own organization. 
but anybody that wants to participate is welcome to help us hit these numbers. That's going to be a tough challenge to meet, but that's the sort of thing that we have to do as a community in order to make CiviCRM sustainable. That's, that's, our, that's our wrap up. Thank you for attending. Um, there is free beer tonight, thanks to the Free Software Foundation. Free is in beer, 630 at Spanky's Urban Roadhouse. So that's it. Thank you, everybody, for coming.